Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Baruch Hashem. It is Wednesday night. Tomorrow morning, the Ashkenazi Magnesi Lechuni Raninan Shacharit. So we're mamash in Shabbat already. That's it. We always said Tuesday night is the Shabbat in the middle of the week, because really it's Wednesday. We're Jews. Tonight is Wednesday. It's already started Yom Rabi'i. And Ashkenazi in the morning and the song of the day, they say Lechuni Raninan La Hashem. Just like all of us say on Shabbat. Baruch Hashem. Last week we learned about Noam Shabbat. The pleasantness of Shabbat, what is it? What is it that we're trying to get to? What is this me'en olam idea, this idea of from the world to come? And now, Bizat Hashem, we're going to be learning a chapter on how to merit to get this light of Shabbat. Of course, this is still part of the introduction, right? It's a whole entire book of really how to do it. But we're trying to set the tone so that when we get into the book, we know what we're talking about. So this chapter is called, Ech Zochim Lagishet Ora Shabbat, How to Merit to Feel the Light of Shabbat. Good, I want to hear it. Good. There you go. So, now, the question that all of us have after last week of learning of what is Noam Shabbat is how do we merit to get to a level where we can acquire this, to really live it out so that our Shabbat will actually be that Noam Shabbat, Men Olam Abba, Nafshi Cholat Techa. And there's three fundamental principles to this of how to merit the light of Shabbat. The first principle is to be seeking after the Shekhinah. Reshit kevan shekol mahuta v'ora shel Shabbat Kodesh hu shiye yom shebo Hashem yidvach nitgelei alenu. Since the whole entire essence, like we explained last week, is that Hashem has a day that He reveals Himself to us. He poteach lanu et ha-petach l'dabek bo v'litkarev elav. He opens up for us an opening of how to cling to Him and how to come close to Him. ממילא מובן שהדבר הראשון שצריך כדי לקבל את האור השבת הוא לרצות את האור השם יתברך. Therefore, the first thing you need in order to get that is to actually want Hashem. To want Hashem's light. If that's what you want, then you're already on the right path. But if Hashem's giving you an opening to come closer to Him, to cling to Him, but you don't want that, then what, what's going to be? כי רק יהודי שמחפש את השם יתברך עצמו ואת קרבתו וזוכה למלא את חייו או לפחות רוצה למלא את חייו באור נועם וקרבת אלוקים only a person who's seeking out Hashem and he's seeking to be close to Hashem and he, and he wants to merit to fill up his life with Hashem or at least he wants to fill up his life with Hashem with the light of the closeness and this tranquility of being close to Hashem until he's mamash, he cares about Hashem. Only a person like that can really merit to get into this light of, light of Shabbat. But a person who's not seeking out love of Hashem and closeness to Hashem, then even if he's working and he's doing Avodat Hashem, he's doing Torah and Mitzvot, he's, he's checking all the V's as we say. Lo yelo tam be Shabbat. He's not going to have a taste. He's not going to have some kind of sweetness in Shabbat. kol ma'uta shel Shabbat. What's the whole entire essence of Shabbat like we explained last week? A revelation of the, the core of Hashem, the, the, the essence of Hashem is being revealed on that day. Without any reality, without any connection, how a person is working and what a person is doing and how, what a vodah he's busy with, anything. No, Shabbat is a day for Hashem to reveal Himself. And this is the reason that on holidays, you, 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 every Jew has this kind of feeling. But on Shabbat, it's not so simple that you get that feeling. Right? Like we said last week, Yom Kippur, you get excited. But on Shabbat, do you treat it with the same thing? Do you go into Shabbat with the same awe that you go into Yom Kippur with? Or do you ruin it before it even starts? Because the light on the holidays, the light is revealed according to our vessels. 
like on Pesach, the, the light is revealed, the, the, the oneness and the reality of Hashem, in a way of an arousal of love. On Rosh Hashanah, in a way of awe and fear. And so too all the other holidays. Therefore a person feels some kind of relationship, some kind of, ah, I understand this, there's, there's more awe in this time, there's more love in this time. And I can, I'm able to comprehend it and I can sort of say grasp that light. But on Shabbat, it is the essence of the light. It's not a certain mida, it's not a certain thing, it's the essence of the light. Without any connection to the reality of the creation, even more so, the light is revealed in a way that it nullifies all of creation. Therefore, everything just says on Shabbat, there's nothing but Hashem. On Pesach, it's love. Human beings can understand love. We can, we can comprehend what love is, so it's kind of like it fits inside one of our kelim. But on Shabbat, it's not about love, this, that, it's the, the light itself. Above all kelim, above all different ways of understanding. Shabbat has no, so to say, no special avoda, no, no unique avoda, just to recognize the reality of Hashem and to nullify yourself to it. So then therefore, a person who's connected to Hashem, he feels the light of Shabbat, that it's above his kelim, it's above his vessels, it's above what he can comprehend. But the truth is, specifically by way of the light of the Mu'adima, by way of the light of the holidays, you can get to the light of Shabbat. Because Dafka, by way of a person recognizing the light of Hashem, that He's revealed within us, within, within us, inside of us, what I can relate to, my life, and my midot, then He starts to have a relationship with Hashem, Right? Because the way of the holidays, I can now understand, oh, there's love, there's fear, there's dvekut, there's all these different holidays. After that, you're able to ascend above that and to go to a higher level of etzema dvekut bor ensof. Clinging to the, to the essence of Hashem and the light of the infinite. Like it's revealed on Shabbat. Because on Shabbat, it's the etzem, again, it's the core, it's the main essential reality, the, the revelation that is, that is much beyond our emotions and our things that we can comprehend and we can try to compartment. Carp I always stumble on this one. Exactly that word, right? To fit in inside of some, some kind of box, right? And to try to understand it. It's above all of that. Therefore, the Moadim, the holidays are called Mikre Kodesh. Mikre Kodesh. Kihem Kuruimu Mazminim Otanula Kodesh. They invite us, they call out to us, come into Kedusha, which is. Shabbat Kodesh. The holidays are the preparation for us to get into Mikre'e Kodesh. They're calling you out. Come to Kodesh. What's Kodesh? Shabbat. Right? The holidays are saying here, this is a revelation of love. Now that you understand it's love, connect to it by way of your vessels of understanding what love is. Now you have Ah, Rosh Hashanah. That's Ah. Connect by way of what's called Ah. And then the whole entire point is that you come every single week to this understanding of a revelation that is above all Midot. And that is just the light itself, the light of the infinite. And this is the main reason that a lot of people, good people, don't feel the taste of Shabbat Kodesh. Even if they feel some kind of arousal on the holidays or when they come to learn Torah, because a person who's still not used to seeking out a relationship with Hashem, it's very hard that he should have some kind of taste, a good taste of Arat Shabbat. It's not just another day. It's a relationship day. Only a person who's always seeking, he's, every corner he takes, he's trying to figure out where is Hashem here? How can I connect my, my, myself with Hashem even more? Then his heart will be happy and he is, his soul will take immense pleasure in the revelation of Hashem's light without any connection to how is this being revealed inside of me? Is this love? Is this awe? Is this that? No, it's not a holiday. It's above everything that you could comprehend. It's just light. The light of Hashem. Because this is His will. And this is His desire. That Hashem should be revealed in the world. Like a, like a son who, who's just happy that his father is getting honored. Does it matter? Is it for the son? No. The son sees his father getting honored. It makes him feel good. The Mesilat Yesharim, the Ramchal HaKadosh, for sure, who, the Ramchal says, whoever intends to purify himself by way of his service of Hashem in front of his Creator, so that he'll... 
לשבת את פניו, לשבת את פניו בכלל הישרים והחסידים, to, to make his face be amongst those that are the straight people and the pious people, to see the pleasantness of Hashem and to visit his chambers, and to re- receive this reward in the, in the world to come, you can't say that this, this would be a bad intention. You want to prepare yourself to be able to return to Hashem, to visit His, His holiest chambers, to come closer to Hashem, and to be amongst the straight people and the pious people. That can, you can never say that's a bad idea. Right? And you could say, though, there is a higher level, because as long as a person is intending for his own benefit, then there's always something more than that. You're, into, you're seeking, you, you want to be that person, you're trying to do that good. The true intention of the pious people that they're trying to work hard in order to get is is rather that you work and you serve Hashem only for the sake of His name being increased and His honor being revealed more and more in the world. This is only after you come to Hashem with immense love. You have a desire, your whole entire desire, what you want out of life, is that Hashem should be more honored in the world. That's the person who's doing it right. And you take pain in any time there's a lack of Hashem's honor in the world. Then you're going to serve your... your Hashem, when you come to do a mitzvah, it's going to be for that purpose. That at least there should be, by way of me, an increase of Hashem's honor in the world. And I will want that all of Hashem, all of the people should also want the same thing. That they all want, everybody just wants more Hashem in the world. More consciousness of Hashem in the world. Therefore, the first, yes, so the first foundation, first fundamental idea in order to receive the light of Hashem on Shabbat, and the light of Shabbat is to make a decision. Go and return to Hashem. To seek out the connection and the relationship with Hashem. Everybody according to where he's holding. And to scream out. Hashem, return us to you. Merit us to be connected to you. Our whole entire will should only be to cling to you, to attach ourselves to you. Mm-hmm. And all of our vitality should only come from a, from a connection to you. Amen. So too, there you go. And every single week, right, mm-hmm. the, the, the fundamental idea of preparing for the Shabbat, which is a huge mitzvah, preparing for Shabbat, is a new decision to seek out on a deeper sense of relationship with Hashem and Hashkinah. Every single week, I want to go deeper with Hashem. It's not the same, oh, I'm back to you, Hashem. No, 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 no. We're on a deeper level now. And if everybody wants to, anybody wants to go deeper on this, go back to the lesson that we did on Dvekut and have a refresher there of how to, how to do this. But that's the idea that every single week we have to approach Shabbat with and how can I connect more? How can I deepen my relationship with you, Hashem? How can I get closer to you? Included in this is to want the light of Hashem, the light of Shabbat. Meaning, like in a general idea, in a a general approach, a person needs to seek out and to want the Shekhinah, to want to live with Hashem with his whole entire heart. So too, in a finer, more precise idea, you have to want the light of Shabbat Kodesh. Wanting the Shekhinah is one thing. Wanting the Shekhinah and the light of Shabbat is another. Because on Shabbat Kodesh, it's a gift from Hashem. Like we said last week, right? Tova yesh li Shabbat shema. I have a good gift in my treasure house, and its name is Shabbat. Give it to Israel and make them let it be known that it's a gift to them. On this gift, Hashem is revealing to us the, the, the essence of His light. And He is opening us up an ability, in a way, a path to come to recognize Him and to be one on one with His Shrina. And the, the idea is. You don't give a gift to a person who doesn't appreciate it. Why would I give a kid, I saw a few, a few weeks ago, a video of a kid, he, someone offered him $10,000 or four Oreos. What did the kid take? 
four Oreos. And we're not talking about a two-year-old. Five-year-old kid, six-year-old kid. He understands money a little bit. He still took the Oreos, right? You could say, if he took, took, took the 10,000, still doesn't really understand what he's getting into, right? So the person, would be, the person giving would be in the wrong, right? Because you don't give a gift to someone who's not going to appreciate it. You only give a gift to someone who's going to appreciate it. Therefore, to be able to receive it, 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 to be able to receive it. Therefore, for us to really be in that position of the people that want Hashem, that to be able to receive the gift that is called Shabbat, we actually have to want Shabbat. We have to desire to have that revelation of what is called Shabbat. Because only a person who's anticipating and wants to receive can do it. Specifically when we're talking about spiritual light, it won't be revealed to a person according to his expectations. <laughs> you're not able to receive something that's loftier than you only if you're, if you're ready to recognize that you're lacking something and you want to receive it. If you think you already have it all, how could you receive a gift that's higher than you? You have to understand, no, I'm here, I don't really understand Shabbat and I want to receive the Shabbat. I want to have a revelation of a Shabbat. So that's the first principle. Wanting the Shekhinah and wanting the light of Hashem. Uh, wanting the light of Hashem in the Shekhinah and wanting the light of Shabbat. The second principle to receiving the light of Shabbat is to prepare towards Shabbat. In order to merit to this light of Shabbat, you have to prepare properly. Because even though the main thing is the desire, right? The fact that you really do want it. That's why it's the first principle. is the desire to be ready to want it, right? First step first, I'm lacking, I want to receive the gift, right? The second thing is now to, be pre to prepare to get it. You have to take that desire and reveal it in the world by way of your thoughts and by way of your actions. Practically. And to prepare, like it's written, They prepared, now we go into Sefer Shemot. This is a pasuk from Sefer Shemot. They prepared what they brought. Everyone was bringing uh, um, uh, donations to the Mishkan, right? It wasn't enough that you brought something to the Mishkan. No, no, let me get it ready. Mamash, perfect, so that it could be installed and, and, and put into place and it can be ready to be used. As soon as it's there, as soon as I show up with my, my, with my tzedakah, with my truma, with my donation to the Mishkan, let it be ready to be used. By way of a person preparing properly, you're showing that you, you appreciate and you hold importance to this gift that you're about to receive. Whoever wants it and you show that this thing is important to me, you will receive with the, with the mercy of Hashem. What does it mean to prepare in actuality? There's two sides to that. It's connected to your desire. One side is, The action proves a, a complete desire. Everybody has a lot of different desires in life. Only the, the full desire that you have, are you willing to actually do something about it? You will have a ton of desires. I would like to travel there. I'd like to do this. I'd like to do that. How many, of you, how many of your desires, if you really just think about it for a second, how many of your desires do you actually bring out to fruition? Not too many. Which ones do you bring out to fruition? The ones you really, really, really want. The ones you really care about. That are really important to you. And the second side is that after the action and after dealing with what you're dealing with, your heart is pulled towards that. And then, and then the, the action starts to make your heart passionate about that thing. So the action comes on one side to take the desire out into fruition and to show that I really do desire this so much that I'm actually doing a preparatory act towards this desire. And on the other side, by way of doing that preparatory act, I'm intensifying the desire even more. So there's two sides to it. This work of preparing towards Shabbat is a very, very big and important avoda, spiritual work that you could do. Like uh, Rizal wrote in Shara Kavanot, and this is what he says, That this person needs to 
וזה דבר גדול, להתקדש האדם בימי החול מקדושת השבת. The reason says like this, no, that a person has to prepare himself to receive the additional light of Shabbat during the six days of the week. So too, that is included inside the mitzvah of you will, you will sanctify yourself and you shall be holy. This is a big thing, says the Rizal. To sanctify yourself on a weekday for the sanctity of Shabbat. Meaning not to wait to two hours before Shabbat to get your Shabbat in there. No. Saturday night you're already doing something towards Shabbat. Monday you're already doing something towards Shabbat. Every single day you're doing something in order to prepare yourself to receive the Shabbat. This is a huge principle that Hashem gave us in order to merit to the light of Shabbat is to prepare yourself every single day of the week towards Shabbat. What is this preparation? It has a few different shades, a few different colors to it. The, the, the equal part between all of them is that a person is thinking about Shabbat Kodesh throughout the whole entire week. And he's yearning for it and longing for it, anticipating it and waiting for it. The first one is actual preparation, physical preparation towards Shabbat, meaning to prepare the food, prepare different things that you need, do the laundry that you need, everyone according to what they have to do for Shabbat, physical actions to prepare for Shabbat. That's first things first. Second, l'chaim, l'chaim. Second thing is, included in preparation, to invest in learning Torah that deals with Shabbat. Here we're Yotze, Tuesday night we're Yotze. To learn Torah that deals with the idea of Shabbat. Masechet Shabbat, Alachot of Shabbat. There's tons, there's thousands, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of pages that you could get to. Right? But to learn a little bit about Shabbat. So to, to go deeper in the light of Shabbat, like we're doing now. According to this, in, included in this is every single day of the week to learn the parasha and its commentators. Because in the parasha Shavua is hidden there all of the light of Shabbat. Yeah. Everything is there. Everything that's going to go on in that week is hidden inside the parasha. So the first thing is to do actual preparation. The second thing is to learn and to prepare yourself spiritually. Third thing is to gishtokek le'or Shabbat, to yearn for the light of Shabbat and to arouse yourself in a thought and a feeling of the heart to anticipate the light of the Shekhinah that is being revealed on Shabbat Kodesh and to think about it and to pray about it and to ask Hashem and to beg Hashem, the creator of the world, to merit to this light of Shabbat properly. So now we added tefillah, right, and anticipation, longing, and praying. And the last thing in, that's included in, in preparation is to try to deal with the light of Shabbat the whole entire week. Meaning that even in the weekdays, you go into this feeling of Shabbat. To feel that enod milvadot. To feel like there's nothing that exists besides Hashem. The true oneness and unity of Hashem, not the Tuesday feeling. The Shabbat feeling. Every single day, take two minutes to sit and contemplate. There's nothing in my world besides Hashem. According to your nefesh, ruach, and neshama of Shabbat. And try to live it out in actions. To see the hand of Hashem in everything that you're going through. And to cling to Him with your whole entire heart. Like you have the illumination on Shabbat. And you can live this out also on a weekday. Why? Because it's a spiritual light. And a spiritual reality is always there. It's not like it comes and goes. It could be Purim every day. Spiritually, right? It could be Shabbat every day, spiritually. Obviously not halachically, because you can't do Purim every day. Right? <laughs> and if you keep Shabbat throughout the whole entire week, then you're going to be in a problem, right? But spiritually, you could be in that mindset. Why not? The third principle is Lit Kadesh, to purify yourself. In order to marry to the Kedushah and the light of Shabbat, you have to sanctify yourself. You have to be holy. Because even though the main thing is Asetov, right? Do good. Go away from bad and do good. The main thing is Asetov, to do good. To want Hashem, to want the light of Shabbat, to, to wait for it, to prepare for the Shabbat. Those are all actions, right? And to bring the light of Shabbat into your whole entire weekday. You also have to do the sumirah though. You also have to go away from bad. 
סור מרע שהוא צריך להתקדש ולהתנתק מהקליפות ומהתאוות. You have to purify yourself, sanctify yourself, to detach yourself from the klipot and from the lusts, from the things that conceal Hashem's light. Anything, and your lust and the things that you want and your desire that are not aligned with that. כי ככל שאדם מכוסה בקליפות רחמנה ליצלן, נפשו נשמתו אינה יכולה להרגיש באור רוחני. The more you're engaged with this world and all of its desires and its lusts and its vices, the harder it is for your soul to be able to feel the spiritual light that it's coming down. Therefore, the, the Torah commanded us, Kedoshim to you, be holy. Only by way of being holy could you live a life of light. Only by way of Kedusha and separating yourself from this world's lust will you be able to take the immense pleasure of lusting towards Hashem, of desiring of Hashem, of experiencing the love of Hashem. If you're always chasing after that escape in this world, and the lusts of this world, then you're going to get used to that, and that's what you're going to desire. Instead of being connected to what you should be lusting after, and what you should be desiring, what you should be madly in love with, which is Hashem. So when your neshama gets covered up in all of these levels, and it wants that physical thing all the time, whether it's the drug, the woman, the food, whatever it might be, then that's what it gets used to. But it's all a lie. Really, what you want is Hashem. So you have to get used to not giving in to your physical desires, so that when the light of Hashem is revealed to you and you can actually get immense pleasure out of it, you're able to actually taste it and to, and to, and to engage with it because you're not covered in dirt. According to how much you're able to separate yourself from Tuma, from impure things, and from physicality, so too you will merit more in spirituality. It's impossible to really, really achieve some kind of spiritual progression, true spiritual progression, without purifying yourself and getting out of the shmutz, getting out of the dirt of life. This, has, this is relevant to every single person according to the level that they're on. The higher a person is on a spiritual level, and the higher that that person wants to achieve, so too he has to be that much more clean. And to go away, distance himself from all of the negativity, all of the evil, all of the lust, all of the physicality. And this is an essential thing in Abu Hashem. That only by way of a person closing himself off from the lusts of this world and according to the level that he, that he overcomes his desires and sanctifies himself, himself, so too will he be able to properly receive the light of Shabbat and any other spiritual light. And therefore, in order to receive the light of Shabbat and the essential truth of the Yihu, the oneness of Hashem, everybody according to the level that they're on has to separate themselves from their lusts and to sanctify themselves that much more. And make effort, make an effort to do this. Because it's impossible to achieve spirituality without hard work and without overcoming things in this life. That's the only way. There's no shortcuts here. We're not going to lie to anybody. The only way to get holier is by way of being stronger and when it comes to physicality. Right? Like now we say in the winter, Shiva Ruach, Murida Geshem. With the Geshem of Shiva Ruach, you could flip it. If you take down the Geshem, take down the Gashmiut, you'll be able to return to spirituality. Right? You have to work on putting down this world and then amplifying the spiritual reality. And the person who sanctifies himself more and he clings to the Shrina more and he's not seduced and pulled after his Yetzara that's trying to make him forget about all of the good of this world which is really just the light of Hashem that person, the more he's able to do this he'll be able to taste the Shabbat, the light of Shabbat even more like we said, the light of Shabbat is a spiritual light it's a revelation of Hashem and only a person who is separated and clean from the klipot, slowly but surely, according to his level, will be able to feel this light. Therefore, Kedushat Brit, sanctifying your Brit, and the clinging to Hashem, Shechina, in prayer, and in avod and doing mitzvot, they are the things, Shachi kovea kama yizkei adam lekedushat Shabbat. These are the things that most determine, they set the tone of how much are you going to merit to feel the Shabbat? How much avodah do you do? How much... How much tefillah do you do? 
because the depth the depth of what a brit is it's not go after the external revelation it's not to go after what I see with my physical eyes rather to understand and to recognize what is internally inside this world to see the light of Hashem which is the internal aspect of everything and He's the only true good and there's nothing that's considered good besides Him and whoever does not guard his breath and sanctify himself to go away from physical things and he always goes after the chitzoniyut, this external reality, this causes him that he won't be able to see the true internal reality. This is the whole entire idea. And if you want more on this, go back to the chapter that we learned in Kiddusha. In summary, we explained here three main ways to merit to receive the light of Shabbat. Three fundamental ideas. In general, they are like this. One, to desire and to yearn to the light of Hashem and to seek out a relationship and a belonging to Him, specifically by way of the light of Shabbat. Okay, in general, I want Hashem and the Shekhinah, specifically by way of the light of Shabbat. Two, to prepare for Shabbat Kodesh in actions, in learning, in thoughts, in feelings, in prayer. And to be dealing with this all day long, all week long. On the level of your nefesh, ruach, and neshama, meaning actions, emotions, and thoughts. And to live out this life of Shabbat in your everyday life, in every facet of your life, going to the bank, going to eat, going on a date, whatever it is, to live the idea of Shabbat that there's enod min there's nothing besides Hashem. And the third thing is to sanctify yourself, everyone according to the level that they're on, to put in extra effort to overcome and to distance yourself even a little bit more from the physicality that you find yourself surrounded in, in order to be able to be a fitting tool and vessel to the sanctity of Hashem Barach by way of Shabbat. And these are the fundamental ideas, and Bezat Hashem, the rest of the book, will be going into all of this more and more and more in a deeper sense. Do you want to push forward a little bit or no? Sure. Huh? Sure. No? Stop here? Go for it. What are we saying? We have a machloket in the car. What is this? <coughs> what are we saying, guys? Huh? Machloket a poskim. Yavosh, What do you say, Rafi? We're going a little bit. Taste the taste next week? Yeah, it's very taste. It's taste. We're not going to finish it all. We're, we'll, even, we'll redo it. But just to start the next chapter, because just to connect. What's the question? The part that you sanctify yourself, when are you supposed to do that? All the day long. For all week, you say to yourself to feel... Meaning, you don't go eat the snack. You had a meal and now you want a snack, you don't have the snack. You saw the girl, you put your head down. Put your eyes down. So, but... The schar is on Shabbat. The schar for that. Because Meaning, according, exactly. The more you, you ignore the physical reality of this world, in the general. more, in general, in every facet of life, the more you will taste the internal reality of this world, which is the light of Hashem, by way of the light of Shabbat. Sorry guys, this is a thermal undershirt, so it's getting very hot. So, Zat Hashem. The beginning of the book goes like this. Mahut Avodat Motzei Shabbat. The essence of the work of Motzei Shabbat. We're learning about Shabbat. So where do we start? Motzei Shabbat is the first moment that you can start to prepare for Shabbat. As soon as Shabbat ends, like they say, like the rabbis say, Mashiach is born on Tisha B'Av. It's not Mamash that he has to be born on Tisha B'Av. The idea of Mashiach was born on Tisha B'Av. Because the second you had a destruction is the second that we're already waiting for Mashiach. And right? it doesn't have to be that he was born on the ninth of Av. But like that, so if you want Shabbat, when do you have to start wanting Shabbat? What's a Shabbat? Immediately, as soon as Shabbat ends. As soon as Rav Chaim Vital starts his book on the works of Shabbat Kodesh, in the book Shara Kavanot, he starts with, What is the work of Motzei Shabbat? That's how Rav Chaim Vital starts the Rizal's teachings on Shabbat. What is the work of Motzei Shabbat? And he emphasizes and says, Why does he emphasize and he says, why, is, why are we starting with Motzei Shabbat? Because straight away when Shabbat comes out, we already start the six days of the week, the six days of mundane, of creation, right? And already we start the preparation for the next Shabbat that's coming. (laughs) 
this, he brings us a whole new perspective on the work of and the feeling of Motzei Shabbat. Usually for us, it's a big downer, Motzei Shabbat, right? But here we're going to get new eyes into it. And he tells us, Don't look at Motzei Shabbat as the end, as the culmination and the what's left over of Shabbat. The crumbs that are left of Shabbat. Don't look at it that way. Don't look at the alachot of Motzei Shabbat as a, as a pius, as a, how do you say pius in English? I don't know. Like a... Side note. No, like trying to, trying to make up for what you lost. Like, ah, you lost that on Shabbat, so here's a Melaba Malka, and here's a Mabdala, and here's like a, you know? Don't look at it that way. The way it is. No. Rather, look at Motzei Shabbat as the beginning of the work of a brand new week and to understand that already from now, you're preparing for the next Shabbat. It's already from now. From Motzei Shabbat, you're already starting the preparation to download the next Shabbat. So what is the essence of the work of Motzei Shabbat? To acquire the light of Shabbat that you downloaded to be an acquisition in you, to really know that it's that it's already there. To take all of this light of Shabbat that we received and to bring it into the weekday. Because on Motei Shabbat, the light is concealed. There's a covering up of the light. And there's Vai Avda Nafesh, right? Oh, I lost my soul. Oh, I lost my soul. But we have to work that we shouldn't leave the Dveku that we received on Shabbat because of the light being concealed and hidden from us. You just had 25 hours of consciousness, of God connection. All of a sudden it's gone? Can't be. El Adraba, even more so. We have to strengthen the light of Yichud even more so and to understand that even if right now I don't see and I don't feel the light of Hashem, it doesn't change the reality that Hashem is always here, even right now, exactly like he was on Shabbat. And I'm connected to him, I'm attached to him, and I'm clinging to him exactly how I was on Shabbat. And this is the internal aspect of Motzei Shabbat, to go in, to take this light, and to download it, to bring it in, this wonderful light of Shabbat Kodesh, into the weekdays. And in there I should see that even in this place where the light is concealed and the light is hidden, to understand and to feel that Hashem Yidbarach is with me in any situation, in any time, and to cling to Him and to live out this truth, even when it appears as if the light has left me, and even when it's very hard and there's not an illumination. The darkness and the hardship, it's not a distancing. Their goal is to arouse us to go deeper into the light of Shabbat, to a place that's much, much deeper in our heart, and to place that light there. To take that light and to bring it into the depths of our heart, and to acquire it with emuna on a higher level, in a deeper sense, in a way that it should illuminate us the whole entire times of darkness and hardship that we experience in life. That also there we should feel inside of us the truth. So we're going to stop there for, the, for this week. So we are up to... Perak Aleph, the first chapter on what is the essence and the light of Motzei Shabbat. Ad Khan, may the Shir be for that Tzacha of the Chayalim and our safe return of all of the Shavuim, all of the captive, and a Refuah Shlema for all of the sick of Am Yisrael. And many, 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 many good, more good news about the assassinations of our enemies and the downfall of our enemies. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Amen.